right, you know what to do. Please welcome Reb Brown, Captain America, Uncommon Valor, and so much more. Yeah, thank you for being here. Is a mic right on the table for you? This work right now? Yes. yes. Hi, guys. Hey. Thank you for coming, and it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. All right, do you want to get right to questions, or you have a few little things you'd like to say? Well, as far as doing Captain America, it was Hold on your we'll closer to the mouth. Doing Captain America was a wonderful experience. I mean, working with Christopher Lee, I got to work with him in Howling, too. I mean, I had such a good time doing that. And I mean, hey, no CGI here with me. Yeah. And uh, it just was a blast. I, I mean, when we were in Venice Beach, I got a quick story to tell you about Venice Beach. We were down there filming, and uh, I come out of my motorhome in the full Captain America regalia, okay? I'm like this. And I look out, and there's a guy over on a wall, okay? And he's blinking at me. And he says, I got to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so of course I go. <laughs> He comes back on the wall, and he looks up, and he goes, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, it, it, this was a blast doing that show, and then with Christopher Lee and everything. And I mean, who, who wouldn't enjoy running 55 miles an hour, pulling people out of dune buggies, and doing some of the stuff I did? I, I loved it. I really did. I, I really enjoyed my career and, and being in movies. In fact, a quick story for you, I was, I was bouncing in a bar. Uh, when I was discovered, I was throwing two guys out. An agent was up on top, and he says, hey, kid, you want to be an actor? I says, just a moment. And I banged these guys' heads together, threw them out the door, and I said, oh, what would I do? He says, that'll work. <laughs> wow. Okay, any questions you guys? Was, was that for the movie Hardcore? No. <laughs> yeah, with George C. Scott. Oh, quick yes. story about that with George C. Scott. When I did Hardcore with him, we were in San Diego, and I had to throw him down these stairs, okay? And he looked at me, and he goes, Reb, do it for real. And I smiled and said, okay. <laughs> and I took him down the stairs, and I, and I slammed him into the car down there, and he looked at me, and he goes, that was perfect. I said, I've done it before. <laughs> All righty, you guys, anything. Got a question? Just raise your hand. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about, um, right, yeah, right down by your chin. Yes, dear. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about working with Gene Hackman in uh, uh, Uncommon Valor? Gene Hackman was a wonderful experience. I mean, there, there's a class act there. Uh, when we did that film, it really, it was really, really inspiration to a lot of vets because a lot of vets had a hard time explaining, you know, what it was like to the camaraderie. And uh, I had a bunch of them come up to me and thank me said, because of you, uh, my wife understands. Couldn't ask for more than that. And Gene Hackman was great. I remember the first day on the set, he says, you guys going to wear makeup? I said, no. And he says, oh, I'm not even. <laughs> he said, but this is going to work out well. And we had a good time on that movie. We really did. In fact, Tex Cobb, the first time I met him, he did one of those swing kicks and bounced me in the nose. He says, I'm sorry, Rabbi. I'm not used to the boots yet. <laughs> We had a, you know, it was a, it was a fabulous time. We got the film, and you know, Patrick was in it also, and God rest his soul. But we had a, a good group of guys and a, a lot of fun on that. We really did. And, and in fact, one of the things that I got to do that really excited me was when we blew up the bridge, not the one in Hawaii, but the, but the other one, the practice bridge. I got to push the button, <laughs> and I. <laughs> And one of, the, one of the things that I remember from Uncommon Valor is that one, one line I had when I was demonstrating the, uh, the explosives. It says, one human problem can be, most human problems can be solved by the proper amount of explosives. And I really enjoyed doing that. <laughs> and those guys, uh, Uncommon Valor was a spectacular experience for me. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I have a little story. I was in... Uh, Westwood with some buddies, and uh, we went to see the movie, and 
Well, if you've seen the movie, I don't make it off the bridge. So uh, the guys, <laughs> this little boy comes up to me after the movie. He goes, I'm so glad you really didn't die. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, but that was, that was a great experience. I, I really enjoyed myself on that, and uh, I'm proud of that movie. I did one, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, called Death of a Soldier. Uh, that was one I did with James Coburn. I was actually nominated for in Australia for Best Actor. I was a, uh, a serial killer. I did it well. And, <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I've done a, a bunch of different things in my career, in, in, in movies and stuff like that. And I've always treasured the fact that the people enjoyed it and, and enjoyed what I was doing. Any questions? All right, just raise your hand. Got one right over here in the front. Right, we'll get you next. What was your favorite genre of film that you liked to do? Was it the oh. action adventure? Was it the, the fantasy? You were in what sort of the sorcerer? Yeah. The, the thing is, Captain America and, you know, and of course the action adventures, you know, and people ask why I always scream. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and, but, you know, with Captain America, it was such a thrill to be able to play a character that was just all good. You know, I mean, I was, it was so positive. There was nothing negative about it. And I enjoyed it very much. And, the action adventures, I, I had a blast doing those. In fact, when I was doing Yor over in Turkey, which they named the country probably, I was over there and uh, I'm swinging that, you know, that wooden axe and I'm in the mud and stuff going all over the place. And I said, I really like this stuff. This is fun. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, uh, I had a blast doing it. I mean, you know, to be able to be able to do stuff like that and be out there and and have fun doing it, enjoying it. It was, it was spectacular. I really had a good time. And, I, you know, this action adventure, you know, anything. And when I did the serious stuff, when I did Leonsky, when I did Death of a Soldier, I did that so well that I, you know, that was, that was pretty heavy duty, playing a murderer. And, and uh, you know, and the way I worked was I just accepted who I was. And uh, it was touch and go a couple of times on that thing. It, it, it was pretty scary doing that. And then, you know, I, I developed a weird laugh. And, uh, you know, and uh, people say, you know, I want your voice. <laughs> go, oh, he's in trouble. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've had, a, I've had a wonderful time doing the movies that I've done. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been in a lot of different countries, in, in Czechoslovakia, Australia, New Zealand, uh, you know, Thailand, Philippines, uh, and meeting people all around the world. I mean, in a lot of these places, I mean, when they see a guy like me coming in, the, the people aren't that big. And all of a sudden they go, who the heck is this? <laughs> in fact, I went to Mass in, in the Philippines one time, and there's about four inches left, and two, three more people <laughs> got in next to me. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> that's, that's how it is here. <laughs> but uh, I had a, a wonderful time. I've had it, you know, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that you guys enjoyed it. Any other questions? Did you, uh, do you uh, more feel more comfortable with television when you're doing television or movies? I know there's a big difference. Well, you know, in, you know, like in, in, in uh, the movies, you know, it's a, it's a longer production. Like uh, Uncommon Valor was 14 weeks, okay? And I hate to say it, but your took six months. <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to come back and smell like lamb. <laughs> But, uh, you know, movies are something, especially when it's, it, you know, it's, it's something you really enjoy doing. It's a blast. And the TV is fun, too. Like when I did Happy Days and, and uh, Three's Company and, and those things. In fact, on, uh, on Happy Days, when, when we did the shoot on that, uh, Donnie Most was the guy that I lifted up in the air and put up against the wall. When we did it in the, uh, in, in the rehearsal, he would put his feet on my on my thighs, okay. And when we did the actual shoot, I just picked them up and put them on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Brad, do you realize what you did?" I said, "I, I was pretty pumped." I mean. Wow. <laughs> and then in, in Three's Company, when we were we were doing the rehearsals, I kicked down the door. Everything was smooth. And then I go to do it in the actual show again and the adrenaline's running and I kick the door down and part of the set comes down and right in front of us and John Ritter's hanging over my left shoulder and goes, way to go, Red. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to go in and 
get kicked out by Chrissy. But other than that, it was okay. <laughs> I've had, uh, you know, as far as experiences on these different things that I've done, I mean, it's been wonderful. You know, the people I've gotten to work with, I mean, James Coburn, George C. Scott, you know, John Lithgow in a movie that uh, was about tripwire events called Distant Thunder. And that was, that was really special to me, too. And, uh, and of course, the action adventures, you know, excuse my language, but I like to kick ass and take names. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Right here. Do you and uh, Chris Evans have a relationship? We're not As going steady. Not a relationship. <laughs> As both being Captain America. No, I've, ne I've never met him. I got to go to the first Avengers, and uh, I never got into one of the shows, you know. I mean, as you can see, I'm not CGI, okay. <laughs> and uh, most of these guys are a lot smaller than I am. I mean, I mean, the only guy that's, I, I mean, I think is probably the same size as me is, is Lou Ferrigno, you know, and, and, and Sam Jones. But those, those other guys are small, and it, they want to just kind of keep it the way it is. They kind of keep it blended that way, but I've never met him. I never have. You know, I'd like to someday. I think, you know, uh, anybody who does Captain America and does a, does a good job of it is a positive force because it is something that to be really proud of. You know, like, like he says in his movies, I can do this all day. You know, you know what I mean? I think that's fabulous. I really do. One of our... Uh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, go ahead. One of our questions in our trivia contest was about a movie that you did back in the 70s, a John Milius film uh, with uh, Jan Michael Vincent, William Catt, and Gary Busey called Big Wednesday. Yes. Uh, well, can you tell us uh, any stories about the filming of that? Oh, yeah, that, that was an absolute blast. Uh, when I went in to interview for that, uh, John Milius had me come in, and he says, okay, you're in, a, you're, you're in this thing, and, the, and the, uh, you know, these guys come in, and they're... they're going into the party and they're not surfers and you've got to get rid of them, okay? And I thought, dude, I can do that. <laughs> and uh, so he asked, uh, you know, what, what I could do and, and uh, I showed him how I could handle myself. I actually had 14 amateur fights and I got black belts in two different things and purple belt and Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So I went in there and, and did this scene for him. He says, yeah, okay, that'll work. So we go to do the movie and... Uh, I never surfed before, but, you know, actors will say, oh, yeah, I can do that. So, you know, other than, you know, going through that and some of the things that I went through, <laughs> learning how to surf, and, you know, I'd be out there paddling around, growling, trying to get to waste just because I wasn't very good at it. But I learned how to do it, and I did it, I did it very well. And, you know, with Gary Busey, oh, my God, what a character. <laughs> okay, uh... We're going out to surf at, uh, at Coho, and uh, he says, hey, Rhea, you, you want to get stoned? <laughs> I said, uh, not at the present time, Gary. I, I, think I'd, I think I'd rather go out and surf first. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, th those guys, Big Wednesday, we had, we had such a blast. The fight scene in there, originally the, uh, some of the other guys were going to be more involved in it, okay? But after Milius saw me, you know, what I did and everything, and he said, okay, it's the enforcer. You're going to do it. And I said, okay. <laughs> and Al Wyatt, God rest his soul, he passed away, but he was one of the guys who's called Big Al, and, and uh, he threw a punch at me and hit me with a left hook, okay, like that. <laughs> and the camera was over here, and Milius just said, it's not real. It's not real. But boy, I just got that look on my face. <laughs> anyway... One of the things you learn in the acting business is you've got to pay back people that abuse you. So when he's up against the corner over there, I buried my left fist into his gut about six inches, <laughs> and I got respect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this just, with that whole thing, I mean, the camaraderie on that movie was fantastic. Jan Michael Vincent and Billy Cat and those guys were wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. The microphone for you here, real quick. And I have a quick question before you get there. Do you do? Uh, did you do a lot of your stunts or work with oh, coordination? Yeah. yeah, my body tells me so. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I've been banged around a lot. I mean, I, like on, on the Captain America. You know, the, most of the guys. You know, a lot of the stunts were done done by the on the motorcycle by the guys. And those those. Well, they had this one day where everybody was gone, and the director wanted me to do this this one thing coming around the corner really fast. So I said, sure. But one of the things on the motorcycle is at the fairing, the fairing on it, 
would shut off the uh, gas to the to the accelerator, okay? And so when I turned it, it stopped. And I, and I go, what's this? And then when I turned it back on, you know, to the right, boy, it would just jet it off. And I went off the back like this. Boom, boom, boom. It hit my head, hit my hip. And I heard the director say, did we get the shot? <laughs> <laughs> So needless to say, they really appreciate you. <laughs> All right, we got a question for you right, uh, right here. There was a sort of odd movie I enjoyed growing up with Dirk Benedict. Oh, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, any uh, memories from that set? Or Absolute, absolutely. What, what happened on that movie was, you know, they wanted a guy to play a, excuse me, asshole football player. And I fit in. Anyway, I went and interviewed over at Universal. And at Universal, I, I went and read, and, and they, they accepted me for the role. This is through the agent that discovered me in the, uh, uh, in the bar, okay? And uh, I did that movie, and then working with Struther Martin and Dirk, and, and the fight scene in there, you know, I, I never learned how to do, this is before I really learned how to do something, you know, just not full force, okay? So when we were doing some of the stuff there, I was really banging Dirk. I mean, I was really tackling him pretty hard. And... Uh, <laughs> Here's the snake in that movie. Okay, the one that bites me, it really does. Okay, I'm in the shower, and they let this thing go in there, and the trainer says, just step on it lightly, and you'll be okay. I said, okay. Well, you know, I didn't know where he was, and I stepped on him, and, and I hit him again, and he hit me twice. Bang, bang. And that blood coming out is mine. And the next day, the, train, the, the snake guy says, he says, you still here? <laughs> yeah, but that was that was it. And then Struther Martin was just absolutely amazing in that. He just, uh, he was he was a great guy. I, I really enjoyed him. And, and, and Heather Menzies too, who was also in the first Captain America. She was a she was just a, a lovely, lovely girl. And we had a good time in that. We go, Reb, you enjoy this, don't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was that was a that was how I got started in it. You know, that right back then, and you know that. And that movie was Zanuck Brown, and it did very well. And uh, I actually had a, uh, one, of the, one of the snakes wrap around my arm and my neck and everything like that. And they said, how did it feel? Creepy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really different and really an exciting thing. That snake was a little bit spooky. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, the audition for Cap... Oh, I'm over here. The audition for Captain America, was there, was that quite a stressful process for you? I mean, that's an iconic character. Uh, were there much people, were there many other actors up for that role? No, they, they just decided that, you know, I was under contract, no, no, I wasn't under contract at Universal at the time, but I was, I think I had been. And Alan Balter, the, the, the producer of the, of the Captain America, was also the uh, producer of Six Million Dollar Man. So we sat down and had lunch, and it was like uh, two moose meeting in the wood. We just, it was perfect. We just got along, and he said, okay, you're my guy. <laughs> and I, and I, just, I just was so thrilled. And I had seen it, you know, when I was a kid, uh, you know, the, the cartoon of Captain America. And I just, I just loved it. I loved the shield. I loved all that stuff. And I, I, just, I just said, oh, man, this is cool. And so all my buddies, they said, how you doing, Reb? And I said, just call me Steve. <laughs> but it was uh, it was thrilling for me to be able to do that and have a good time. Uh, you know, people have all, often asked me about you know how come it didn't go to series. Well, I, I got a story about that. Uh, after the second one we did, uh, CBS wanted to buy it for six episodes, and what happened is is that Universal lost the rights to the uh, licensing fee when uh, we the Hulk was paying twenty five hundred dollars uh, an episode. They wanted fifty grand an episode for the Captain America. And that would have mean, meant that I was riding around the motorcycle in the living room, basically. So they, that was it. So that's what happened. On that. But I, I wish that it could have gone because I, I just was thrilled with it. I had a wonderful time. How was Christopher Lee with work with? Oh, Christopher Lee was just a wonderful human being, you know. And I got to work with him in the Howling too, and I got to know him better. And that man spoke eight languages, okay? And uh, he just was, he was awesome. He just was so cool. I mean, uh, 
we sat there in our, in our trailer at times and laughing. And I mean, he'd go around and he'd speak Russian. This is, we were filming in Czechoslovakia when we did this, the howling. And he would speak Russian, speak German, French. And I, you know, I'd say, I'll speak English. <laughs> and uh, we just, we just got along so, so great. And he just was a uh, wonderful, one of the ladies on that thing was, let's just say that she was different, you know, and he says, it's obvious, she's schizophrenic. And uh, he, he just, I love that man. He, he just, he was a wonderful human being. In fact, when we were filming that, the church that we filmed in, uh, he had trained the guys that were in the SAS as an as assassins to get this general from the German army. And I never had seen him get emotional before, but he, he got emotional. He actually, you could see the bullet holes in, in the uh, actual church where it took place. But uh, that, that, was, that was really something to see that from him. He was, he was quite a guy. Question right here, I gotcha. Is there a role that you haven't played that you always wished you could? Some character. A Jedi Knight. <laughs> 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 yeah, a, a story about that, just a quickie. Uh, my wife would go to the ballet class three times a week. And this is back when they just had the, the three Star Wars movies, okay? and. I'd be listening to, every time she'd go, I'd, I'd watch one of those movies, you know, The New Hope, and then, you know, The uh, Empire Strikes Back, and then Return of the Jedi. And she'd come home and she'd hear the music. She says, honey, what's wrong? I want to be a Jedi Knight. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's what I would want to be. Got time for a few more. Anybody else? Uh, did you uh, have much work with Paul Schrader other than Hardcore? Or was that the only... Excuse me? Paul Schrader, working with Paul Schrader from uh, He's the director of Hardcore. Did you have much to do with him? Oh, that was different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we... When that one was George E. Scott. Yes. Okay, I mean... Well, he knew that I, you know, I actually got into that because of John Milius. And, uh, you know, and he knew that I could handle myself, so I ended up getting that role. But, uh, you know, a story about... Uh, George C. Scott that was absolutely amazing was, you know, I was just starting out as an actor at this beginning then, and we were doing a scene up in supposedly this bordello before, you know, when I, before I threw him out. And he was doing a scene, and I mean, this was a, just an intense, I mean, just intense scene. And he shut it off and goes, is that okay? And I'm sitting there going, wow, <laughs> man, that's cool. Can you teach me to do that? He said, I don't think so, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Paul Schrader, uh, he, he, was, he was quite a guy. I mean, he leaned down one time, and all these pills fell out of his pocket, these purple pills. And I go, what are those? Uh, those are black beauties. I go, what are those? He says, you don't want to know. Wow. <laughs> all right. Want to get one more in? Right there. Oh, we got a couple more. Let's get these. Let's get both. You get him. I'll get him. You first. Here you go. Any good stories about Robo War? Oh yeah, that was a blast. <laughs> we were over in Robo War. We were doing that in the Philippines. Okay, and uh, the thing about that was that was Bruno Mattei, and he was the director on that. And we were we were doing that movie, and uh, you know we were filming at some of these places that. Uh, I mean, some of the bugs there were just like. <laughs> You know, you could hit them and hit them and hit them, and they go, they're just big dudes. But the Robo War was, was, was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, when we were doing that there, and with, you know, but they said, now, Reb, make sure you don't pull the trigger on this because it was live ammo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you work 15, 16 hours a day, and all of a sudden you're going, don't pull the trigger. Oh, Polish. But these guys, uh, you know, a lot of the Italian actors and stuff on, on there, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And we'd play basketball, you know, against the Filipinos, okay? And uh, we got out there and, and uh, we, you know, who sees a six foot uh, Filipino? All right, we get out there in, in a local square and we're out there to play. And of course, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, they say, well, uh, we're going to take care of you. Okay, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. So we're out there, we're playing, and these guys come out, and I blocked this shot on this one one guy, 
And the whole crowd goes, ooh. But we had, we had a lot of fun there. And uh, these guys, they work hard. They really work hard. And it's, you know, it's, it's difficult at times because of the rainstorms and, and, the, and, and some of the bugs that are always, you know, you can hear them everywhere. You know, you have to stop at 4 o'clock because of the uh, the rainstorms and, and the uh, and the bugs. I mean, they're like, I, I guess, acadas or something like that. And they're really just, you know, piercing, you know. And he says, well, just turn off the volume and we won't do dialogue. <laughs> but we had uh, we had fun with those guys. They, they, were, they were good people out there. A lot of fun on that. And, I, you know, the guy, the poor guy that was doing the, uh, the robo guy, I mean, I couldn't believe he'd get in that thing and, and oh, my God. How hot it was out there. You know, you just, thing about the Philippines is, is you go there and if you weigh, you weigh 230, you're coming back at 210. <laughs> you just sweat constantly. But, you know, like I say, I, I enjoy doing that stuff. It's a lot of fun for me. Another one that I did for Bruno Mate was uh, uh, Strike Command. And in, in Strike Command, that, that was, uh, I could always tell what was going to happen the next day because the director was listening to either Rambo or some of these other ones and he was copying them. <laughs> I said, where'd you get this? Rambo. Okay. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's what it is. But that's, that's Philippines. That's, that's what it is. You come off the airplane, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and it's uh, 110 degrees. You go, oh, okay. Uh, and, then, and you're in your room and you can see these little... Uh, the little uh, lizards, the geckos, they're going across and they're eating the mosquitoes. So it's different. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Yeah, we got one over here to your right. Got a question? Thanks for being here. And uh, I heard you mention surfing. What was the hardest thing you had to learn for a job? Is, is to make sure that you catch the right wave. Because on, on surfing, on surfing it's, it's all about you know making sure that you get on it and you get away from everybody else. Because... When I first learned, I learned down in San Onofre from the Paskowitzes, okay? And there were some old-time Malibu surfers down there. And he says, I remember this guy's name was Tubestay. He says, hey, Rev. He says, any of these little guys get in your way, just run over them, okay? So I practiced that, and, and I got pretty good at it. <laughs> and, uh, but I would, uh, I would come down the, the front of a wave, and I had a number of times where I'd have these people get in front of me, and I'd flip their boards up like this. they go, oh, it's you, okay. And then after Big Wednesday, when we, I'd be surfing out at Malibu, you know, I'd see something happen where, where somebody'd be in an altercation or something like that. And that's ridiculous to get into a fight over a wave, okay? And I go over there, I says, now knock it off. He says, who are you to say that? And I says, ask around. I, I apologize, sir. <laughs> but that's that's it. But I, I, I love surfing. It was just an absolute blast. I got to surf in Hawaii with Uncommon Valor, too. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. I didn't surf in Big Wednesday at, at, in Hawaii because I would have died. <laughs> All right. We got, a, we got a final question for you right back here. And then uh, I think after this, Reb's going back to his table. So come, you, come see me. If you got <laughs> yes, any other please. questions, come on, see him. Get a, get an autograph and uh, yeah, hang I'm out. He's got great stories. So here's, here's our final question. Thank you uh, for coming tonight. Um, oh my, why am I forgetting the name of the movie? The, one, the movie You Met Your Wife. Thank oh. you for that. And what's the legacy of Space Mutiny? There it is. Space Mutiny, what's a legacy for you? Because over the last 25 years or so, it had to have uh, gotten some more attention because of another television. They say that I met my wife on that, but I met my wife on the uh, Ted Knight show, which she was a regular on, okay? And Thank the first day I told her I loved her, the second day I... The second day I told her I'd marry her, and it's 41 years later. We're still together. And as far as... Wow, nice. As far as Space Mutiny, I've never been called so many names in my life. <laughs> they ask, sometimes when I sign the autographs, they'll, they'll ask me to put one of those names in. I say, well, okay, whatever you say. 
Please forget it. <laughs> but thank you for asking that question. Oh, and thank you for being here. Uh, what a pleasure. Rep Brown, Captain America, uncommon. You know what to do. He's going to be heading back to his table to sign and hang out with you guys. Such a pleasure. Once more, Rep Brown, thanks for bringing it. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.